Mike Moore Media. On our media line, the mayor of Eden, Neville Hall, our monthly podcast. Neville, always good to talk to you. How are you? I'm doing fine, Mike. Thanks for having me on. Yes, let's talk about the big uh, Bart Park opening last Friday. That went well, didn't it? Yeah, we had great weather, great turnout. Uh, this is an, uh, an event that the Cindy had planned for a while uh, in conjunction with a ribbon cutting for the new and improved dog park at Freedom Park that uh, Serena generously funded with a grant for us to do that. We have one of the best, I'm sure, dog parks anywhere around here. So mm-hmm. we're, we're thankful to have Serena here and already jumping in and helping us with projects such as this. And, you know, uh, you said it a good way there, already jumping in. It haven't really opened yet. That will be next year. But uh, just in the last little while that they've been here, putting that all together and, and repurposing that plant and adding employees uh, to prepare for that, uh, they have done a lot in our community, in our county already, haven't they? They have, and they're starting to ramp up their uh, their hiring and get get ready to start producing some pet food soon. So there's a, there's a ton of construction work going on, as everybody probably is aware, and uh, we're just, like I said, lucky to have them here doing what they're doing. So mm-hmm. um, it's going to make a great impact for our uh, our community. They're uh, they're one of those companies, um, Nestle Purina, that uh, gives back to the communities where they are. That's for sure. Uh, talking about mm-hmm. giving back, uh, let's talk about last week's Eden City Council meeting and uh, giving back uh, approach to things there with the Eden Youth Council. That was right up uh, at the front of the meeting. Uh, they're doing some good things. Yeah, this is a, that's a service oriented group of you know young people in the in the community who who want to get involved in sort of local government stuff as well as uh, bringing their concerns and needs to to the city council. They're sort of the liaison to the to the high school age people, and uh, as part of that, they put on different programs and do different service things. And this one that we uh, highlighted last week was their kickball tournament that they partner with the uh, elementary schools and each school puts in a couple of kickball teams and the uh, youth council or coaches and, and organize it and and then the uh, Eden Police Department serves as umpires for the game so it's just a fun sun Saturday morning what it was and um, the rain forced us to move it from Freedom Park to the uh, soccer field in front of Holmes Junior High Holmes Middle School and uh, it was all it was very well coordinated effort by everybody moving with the moving parts of the location and the parents uh, understanding and bringing them there and huge turnout great great event the kids have a ball um, mm-hmm. and as well as the coaches and umpires so yeah that was what we were recognizing the, the winning kickball team mm-hmm. and and and, uh, and recognizing the youth council for putting on another successful event sure yeah yeah uh, so thanks to them for that, and I know a couple of people singled out that, and they gave some numbers: Lexal Spray and Douglas and Central, and uh, over 80 students involved in that. Eden Police Department and uh, Town Attorney, a City Employee, Aaron Gilly, and also mentioned was the uh, uh, 5K Color Run they did on Smith River Greenway uh, recently. Uh, Rockingham Hope and Phoenix Alliance. Um, getting the uh, the proceeds from that. So thanks to them. Young people making yeah. an impact now at their age and, and hopefully in in our communities uh, in years to come. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, next. Exactly. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so they, they, they are uh, leading by example and, and seeing the things that, that uh, they're accomplishing is, is great to see the young people get involved. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Right. Next on the agenda was the uh, budget. Uh, Council approved the budget of uh, approximately $31 million. Uh, No uh, tax increase there. Um, No uh, water sewer rates increasing. That's always good news. It is. I I mean, we do have a $1 uh, solid waste increase, and that was directly uh, passed through from the the county. Tipping fee went up $1. Oh, yeah. Okay, $1. But that's not on the water and sewer side. That's something that we have no control over. So mm-hmm. we just pass we just pass through what what it costs to, to get 
to use the landfill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, so that uh, went smoothly. Uh, people don't realize a lot of work. Uh, the, the city manager, John Mendenhall, and and you and your budget retreats and meetings, a lot of work getting uh, from from uh, the starting point of that in uh, early January or probably before then to get that budget approved, isn't there? Oh, yeah, there's uh, tons of staff meetings that are involved, and then council meets uh, with the budget retreat for an all-day discussion of it. Uh, then, you know, we have the public hearing, and, I mean, we just approved the budget for next year at this meeting, and I would imagine that the department heads are already looking towards next year and the city manager um, planning ahead for uh, the next budget because some of the things are <clears throat> will carry over and take several budgets to get paid for. So it's, it's already it's a long process to get it done and have a balanced budget. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> So, again, about $31 million for uh, the 23-24 budget for the city of Eden. And, uh, and next, I'm kind of going right down the agenda here, Mayor. Uh, the people spoke and uh, city council listened to uh, a, a rezoning issue. Uh, tell us about that on, um, on North Kennedy Avenue. Um, it's a little lot that's behind the car wash at Facebook Stadium Drive. It's uh, a little wooded lot behind that that the owners were it hadn't been able to market it as a residential use i'm assuming it's just uh, close to those other commercial uses and they were hoping to get it rezoned to allow a, a business to purchase it and um, the neighbors came and spoke against it and the council decided that uh, at this time it's not a good time to rezone it to allow a commercial use so mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, several uh, neighbors uh, there spoke against that, and that request was denied. Okay, uh, some other rezoning things there. I don't know if we needed to mention those or not, but uh, that was on the agenda. Um, and then we had um, uh, citizen input, always an opportunity at city council meetings for, uh, for citizens to speak. And I was impressed with cool. Valencia Abbott who's a, a teacher at Rockingham Community College, and she talked about uh, some important uh, dates coming up in the fall with some uh, state monuments that will be erected here in the county. Uh, looking at, um, uh, first thing she mentioned was at Dan River Steam Station and um, the, um, the African-American employees and the um, um, things that uh, happened in that I wasn't really aware of. So she and I have connected. So uh, since we talked the very next day, as a matter of fact, and uh, we'll be oh, doing. Good, huh? Yeah. So thanks for I'll your help out. on I'll that. Yeah. Trying to find her phone number for you. I'm glad you got in touch with her. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that is uh, an exciting thing that's happening in our county, and uh, it's a big deal. Supreme Court case that was decided and still impacts employment laws today. So it's uh, it's it's good that we're going to have a. Um, marker for that and uh, some celebration of that. And I, that's what she was making sure the city was aware and on board with uh, getting involved with the celebration. And we, we, of course, we are. So yeah. I'm glad she came and brought that to everybody's attention. Well, I was impressed with uh, the, the back of her shirt was printed, Rockingham County is passionate about history. So we never need to, ne never uh, should ever lose that uh, perspective for sure. But uh, let's see, I kind of jotted down things that not uh, too good in my notes. August 1st, um, the civil um, uh, rights uh, marker, uh, NC State Highway marker in October. And that's kind of sketchy here. But we'll, we'll be finding out more about that. And you said the city will be involved, too. So That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, anything else from that meeting? Uh, some other things covered, of course. Um, some different... Uh, things around the city. Anything we should mention? Uh, not anything earth-shattering. We closed a, a portion of a street that's never really been open. It's just an alley between some properties that uh, the adjoining property owners said they'd like to have it closed, and there's no reason not to. So we, we officially closed a, a dead-end street, and uh, we accepted a, a street for city maintenance in a, in a subdivision that was when somebody does a subdivision, we give them a set of specifications and say, if you build your road to this specification, it can become a city road, and they did, and so we accepted the, the uh, control of it. Mm -hmm. That was, that's Lark, Lark, Lark Street. Lark, 
Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, and then we sold a couple of pieces of excess land that, uh, you know, this that the, pro- the adjoining property owners made offers on, and uh, it started the bid process. If anyone wanted to upset the bid, we just it's time to get it off of the off of the taxpayers' back and our city employees having to mow the thing. So it made sense to, to get rid of those and sell them to the adjoining property owners or anybody else who's interested in buying them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one uh, Dallas Street, one on Bird Street, where the uh, old water tower mm-hmm. was for many years. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so some some that's up for sale now, as you said in the meeting. Yep, it is. And I mean, there's an offer that was made and. We tentatively accepted it, but there's a when we sell surplus property, we have to have a ten day upset property upset bid process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you did read a proclamation uh, about Public Works Week, and I have here that uh, um, you know as you recognize them, and I think the city manager said we have 179 city employees, uh, and and Public Works vitally important to what happens in uh, in and around the city. It is, and uh, like I said, it's Public Works Week. I went out yesterday afternoon, and uh, they had hot dogs and hamburgers for the guys and girls, and uh, just to show our appreciation for them, I, I told them yesterday, you know, that those those people are the, the face of the city. They're the ones that when you have a problem and you call the city for something to be fixed or looked at, that, that's who you see, and, and their interaction with the citizens is, is invaluable to the council. I mean, it's nice when you have people you can depend on and they're going to show up and they're going to be professional and, and they know what they're doing. We've got a lot of experience in our public works department. Mm-hmm. People have been there a long time and, and know what they're doing. So, you know, this is just an opportunity to, to thank them for all the things that the, the hours they work, they come out in the middle of the night and when there's a water leak or something, a tree across the road, they, they just are always, always there and, uh, we're fortunate to have a strong public works department as we do. We certainly are. So thanks to that team for sure. Okay, let's play ball tonight. Now what's up? Absolutely. We got uh, expecting a huge crowd tonight at the Moorhead baseball game. It is uh, the fourth round of the, uh, the high school bas- baseball championship. And uh, we're in a best of three series with Burns. And we lost the first game Tuesday night up there. So we need to win at home tonight. We need a big crowd there to make some noise. Uh, if Moorhead wins here tonight, they go back to Burns on Saturday, I'm assuming weather permitting, mm-hmm. and then the winner of that game advances to the state championship game. So this is the furthest uh, any Moorhead baseball team has ever made it in the playoffs, and uh, they really have generated a lot of excitement around the community. And um, It's just been fun to watch these, these young guys, and a lot of them are – juniors and they'll be back next year so look for another strong team next year but uh we still we need to win tonight and and keep this season going because it's been a it's been a fun ride for the for the kids and the fans and the coaches because uh like i said they've never made it to the third round or the fourth round obviously Mm -hmm. but uh so they're doing well big night so come out and support the team for sure okay six o'clock tonight yep at moorhead Moorhead. one time Mm -hmm. all right well, Mayor, anything else before we wrap it up? Uh, let's see. The Oink and Ale's coming up June seventeenth. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I know you do your podcast with Cindy, so I won't. I won't repeat all that. But we have a ton of acti- of our festivals and things going on that oh, yeah. people should check check on the website all the time and see what's going on. But Oink and Ale is one of our signature events. So mm-hmm. I want yeah. to mention that. And yeah. the Pottery Festival is the third. So anyway. Yeah, June, June, another busy month. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, in Canal, yeah. that's my birthday, so I guess I'll be celebrating there. Oh. <laughs> Actually, there you go. Let's get the band to sing Happy Birthday. Oh, boy. I don't know about that, but yeah. oinking and ailing for sure. Yeah, all right. There Mayor, you you thank you very much. Always great to talk to you, and thanks for the update on everything. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Thanks for having me. Okay, talk again next month. All right. Bye-bye. That's our mayor uh, in Eden, Neville Hall, our monthly podcast with him. And that is available on uh, iHeartRadio and uh, Spotify and Tumblr and wherever you get podcasts. And that is available um, on our website uh, indefinitely, archived there, along with all of our other programs as well. You can find out more about what's going on around the city of Eden 
with ExploreEdenNC.com. May are talking about some upcoming events, and that is a good place to start. EdenNC.us is the city's website. So if you're new to uh, Eden, Rockingham County, you can uh, go to that website and find out everything you need to know to get you acclimated about Eden. Thanks to our sponsors, Uptown Pharmacy, Corinne Brooks, and the folks there at Uptown Pharmacy doing an outstanding job. Always like to stop in and talk to them. Look for their new sign out front. That's at the corner of Washington and Hamilton Streets. And, you know, it's easy to get in and out of Uptown Pharmacy. Uh, Plenty of parking all around the building. And I was just thinking, too, how easy it is to use their drive through window. Some are not uh, that easy. <laughs> uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. But theirs is on the back of the building, so you drive right in, come off Hamilton Street. It, it's very easy to get in and out and use that drive-up window there. And then uh, their shelves always well-stocked with lots of OTC items over the counter. And then very impressed with their selection of vitamins and supplements. That's Uptown Pharmacy. They're there for you, for all of your prescription needs, of course, on the corner of Washington and Hamilton Streets. Thank you, Corinne. And then we have uh, Carter's Auto Repair and Exhaust on West Kings Highway. The uh, folks there are all qualified mechanics. Quality work at affordable prices. They specialize in exhaust, custom and stock exhaust. They do all Automatic, all uh, automotive work, but uh, that is one of their specialties there. That's part of their name, Carter's Auto Repair and Exhaust. They are available for North Carolina state inspections. And when I was in recently, I was looking at their big selection of interstate batteries, a name that everyone trusts. That is Carter's Auto Repair and Exhaust on West Kings Highway in Eden. They're open Monday through Friday, 830 to five. Support these businesses. Shop local. Shop in Eden. Thank you for that. 